Hi everyone. Today we're going to be discussing brew water for coffee. Now, finding really great coffee beans is obviously the most important thing if you want to have delicious coffee at home, and that's very easy to do now with the wealth of great coffee roasters that are out there. But finding good brew water is a little bit more troublesome. It can be very wasteful, it can be very you have to be very nerdy to get it right. But ultimately, I'm going to pitch to you today an idea that's relatively simple and elegant, using the zero water jug to blend your own brew water to give you customizability, repeatability and consistency. So the ideal scenario would be that you turn on your tap and it's giving you water with a certain amount of hardness, but specifically a certain amount of alkalinity to brew your coffee. It's very rarely the case. You're very rarely going to turn your tap on and have 40 parts per million bicarbonate hardness, which we're going to call alkalinity today, and be able to brew delicious coffee with that. But if you use a BWT jug or a Brita jug, it's going to soften your water to a degree to get you closer to that target. But what I think is great about the zero water is it goes all the way to zero so you can then build on that, create a little bit more volume of water as well to give you absolutely perfect brewing water. There are two main ways that you could use the zero water to craft brew water. The first is adding your own minerals. This can be done with DIY water recipes that you can find online using things like Epsom salts and calcium bicarbonate but they are quite involved and minute differences in measurements can make it really tricky to be accurate. You could also do things like buy third wave water mineral sachets or perfect coffee water or other brands, which need a gallon of water produced by this, throw in a sachet, shake it up and you've got nice brew water. But if you want control over the actual level of everything in there, you can also very cheaply simply add tap water to it. Add water from your tap and this until you get the desired reading on your TDS meter to get you into a nice spot for a different range of coffee flavor profiles. I'm gonna provide some jumping off points for what to aim for depending on the flavors you enjoy in your cup. But what is important to know is that depending on your starting tap water, you might want a different reading depending on how much alkalinity there is in your starting water. Here in the roastery in London, I need to go for a certain number here, whereas at home in Hertfordshire where the water is a little bit of a different makeup, I need to aim for a different figure to get similar levels of alkalinity in the water to recreate the results in the cup. So I have a couple of different models of the zero water jug here. This one uh, made of plastic, white and blue one is going to hold 1.7 litres of water and the black and stainless steel one here is going to hold 2.5 litres. So you can create a little bit more in one go because the filters are relatively slow draining. But what's more important to me is how much can this single filter create? And the answer is it depends. If you're living in an area with really hard water, it's not going to produce as much as if you're already in a soft water because the filter doesn't have to work so hard. If your water is under 200 parts per million, you're going to get close to 100 litres of water um, and soften that obviously a little bit more. The rating for where I am, uh, I am at home, I'm going to get anything between about 60 and 90 litres of water per cartridge. So getting started with the zero water jug, it's very simple. It's just like any other filter jug. You give it a wash, pop your filter in, add water, and the water underneath is going to be filtered and ready to go. In terms of when to change the filter, some jugs will have a little timer function on the top that says, you know, after a month, change the filter. Others that are a little more clever will have a little spring-loaded uh, flap on the top that know how many times you've topped it up, so they guess it when the filter needs changing. With this one, however, you get a little TDS meter included. The moment this reads 006, it's not effectively filtering the way it should, so it's time to change out the filter. Now, these are incredibly unfashionable in the specialty coffee world, TDS meters. They use electrical conductivity to sort of guess and take a stab at what's in your water overall. It doesn't break it down into the specifics that we know we really need to know to uh, really get to grips with the toothy problem of brew water. But they're very handy as a crutch to know one when to change your filter, yes, but then when you're blending, what target number to aim for to get you lovely water that can create delicious cups of coffee. Okay, the first step, take the cap off the filter cartridge and screw it into place. It'll form a little seal, so there's going to be no bypass at all. All the tap water is going to pass through this cartridge and get down to zero. This is your base from which you're going to build your brew water. Now, you can use other things if you want to. You can use the minerals that we talked about or other kinds of filtered water, but here we're just going to use tap water. Put a little bit of tap water into your jug or carafe or whatever it is you're going to make your brew water in and then just cut it down with the zero water until you get to the desired TDS reading. For something really bright and light with a pronounced acidity, you might want to look at about 60 to 75 on the TDS meter. 
But if you want something more balanced, sweet and round, go for between 90 and 100. And if you want more bittersweet tones, a richer coffee with more texture to it, maybe something between 140 and 150 is more appropriate. Okay, we've brewed some coffee. Uh, the first one I made was with the uh, blended water that we've just made. So the one that measured 70 on the TDS meter, great alkalinity, good overall measurement, should be delicious. And just for comparison, I've put down one brewed with the straight zero water, and also one brewed with tap water here, which is very hard, very chalky. So we're gonna taste and see what the differences are. Start with the one that's supposed to be delicious. Very much is. Lovely present sweetness, nice ripe acidity, really balanced, really clean, silky mouthfeel. That's wonderful coffee. Now I'm gonna try the zero one. It's a lot tinnier, um, the acidity is more sour, and the body's a little bit grippy, and it just tastes less complete. It's a bit fleeting in the finish as well. It suggests maybe less of an extraction and the acidity is a little untamed. Uh, it's not amazing, it's not terrible. I could definitely drink this, but um, a little bit out of balance, a little bit uh, uh, thin. And now we'll taste the one brewed with tap water. It's just a shame because I know the coffee's great and the, the brew was great, but this is just unremarkable. It's pretty flat, pretty dull. Doesn't have the pop of acidity that you would hope for, um, knowing the, the beans we've used and a nice brew. Yeah, it's just a little uninspiring bit every day. And a little bit more bitter as well, kind of like a grippy, bitter thing as well. Both of these have like not quite so pleasant a mouthfeel as the one brewed with the blended water. Mm which I could drink all day. That's really, really nice, really juicy. So I hope I've managed to convince you that the zero water can be a welcome addition in your coffee brewing arsenal. We always say buying a great grinder is a good step on your coffee journey. And I think solving the brew water problem is, has been really persistent. And this is quite an elegant solution. Gives you customizability, control, repeatability, um, unrivaled with many other filtering setups. So I really enjoy brewing with it at home. And if you have any questions about how to use it, then you can email us on betterbrewing at workshopcoffee.com or leave a comment below and we'll get back to you there too. But that's it from us for today. So take care and we'll see you soon.